Alright, hello everybody, welcome to another video, and today I want to talk a little bit about farming gold billions, or rather, farming the treasury nodes that you then turn into gold billions via the gold press machines. Now, first things first, if you don't care about anything I have to say here, which is fine, you can click the link in the description, which will take you to a Google spreadsheet where you will have everything laid out. So you will have the events that do give you the treasury notes in green, the events that don't give you treasury notes in red, and then the events that I haven't managed to do yet in white. Also, if I was able to figure out how many treasure nodes the event gives you, I will put it in there as well, because some events give you two and some of them give you three, and sometimes you can't actually see how many you got because you get too many rewards and the nodes are just not visible. So gold bullions are the currency that you unlock at the end of the main Wastelander storyline and you use them to buy stuff from either Mortimer, which is the raider vendor, Samuel, which is the settler vendor in Foundation, or Rex, who is kind of like the main vendor, he has the most stuff and you find him in Vault 79, simply exit the elevator, go down the stairs and then turn left, you're looking for a bold guy with glasses. But first you need to actually get some gold billions. Now you get a nice chunk of them at the end of the Wastelander storyline, but then then you have to go to these gold press machines which you find in foundation and the crater and turn in your treasury nodes for gold bullions up to a maximum of 200 per day. Now the most obvious way to get these treasury nodes is from the daily that you get every time you log in for the first time during the day. But that is simply not enough because from the dailies that I did I got two treasury nodes a pop and you can turn in up to 20 a day. And this is where the random events come in because a lot of them have been modified to reward these treasury notes. It is also worth mentioning that if you go to the first floor of the wayward there will be a vendor called Smiley who will weekly exchange up to 6000 caps for up to 300 gold billions with you. So if you have the caps you can get an extra day and a half worth of gold billions every week. But by far the most reliable way of getting gold billions is just farming events for treasury notes. However, not all the events will give you treasury notes. And this is why I've spent many many hours today doing all the events that popped up, trying to figure out which ones do give you treasury notes and which ones don't. Now I haven't been able to test all the events because I for example haven't seen one violent night at all since the update dropped and I'm simply not able to do things like radiation rumble because some of the events like radiation rumble are just too brutal. But I ran an absolute crap ton of events and I ran a lot of them multiple times just to make sure that they do indeed give you treasury notes or they don't indeed give you treasury notes. So let's quickly go through the ones that do indeed give you treasury notes. Starting off with guided meditation. This is a pretty easy event that you should have no trouble soloing because if you go in solo most of the time the ghouls will only attack one of the speakers so you just have to defend the speaker until the timer runs out and you get your reward. Next on the menu we have Feed the People, which is an extremely popular event in a very populated area and this is just like a multi-stage, mostly defense event, but you should have no trouble doing this because there's always a lot of people doing it, but even if you are solo it's a very low level event so you should have no trouble doing it whatsoever. Next up we have Free Range, which is the Sheep Squatch event and for some reason my cows decided that they're not having any of this and decided to bull rush the Sheep Squatch and two of them ended up dying and I still managed to get the treasury node so you don't need all the cows to survive to get the rewards there. Now this is an event that I would not recommend to people that are either a lower level or don't have good gear because the Sheep Squatch that spawns at the very end is extremely tough. So if you don't have the defense he will just straight up kill you and if you don't have the DPS he will kill your cows. Another event that rewards treasury nodes is Jailbreak. Now this event is pretty low level, it's in a low level area so you should have no trouble finishing it whatsoever regardless of your level or gear, but I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this one because I personally think it's just slow and boring, it just drags on and on and on and the rewards are, you know, not amazing. But you know, maybe I'm just doing it wrong so give it a shot and if you like it, just do it. Up next we have Load Barring which is in my opinion one of the best events that you can do in the Ash Heap. Especially if you need to craft some ammo, because the event consists of you running around like a headless chicken inside a mine that has a ton of ore that you can just grab and then smelt. So if you see loot barring, definitely jump in and do it. Up next we have one of the new events, Riding Shotgun, where you have to escort a Brahmin caravan through the Big Ben Tunnel and I'm not sure how hard this one is because I've only done it a couple of times and I don't know if the enemies scale or not. It does start in the Cranberry Bog so it might not scale and might just be a max level event but I honestly don't know, I'm level like 330 so most of the time when I do something it's max level. Moving on from there we have Heart of the Swamp which is a somewhat common event but it's also kind of difficult 
to code. The idea here is that you have to destroy a strangler heart and as you're damaging it, it will send waves of enemies to fight you. With usually the second to last wave being a mini boss, something like a Marler Queen or the Grafton Monster and stuff like that. So if you have really bad gear or your build just straight up does not deal well with loads of enemies because you will be swarmed by like Marlurks and Ghouls, you might want to skip this one. Next we have Tea Time, which is a very low level defense event in the forest where you have to defend three separate pipes against three waves of very low level critters while Mr. Handy is brewing tea. This is probably the easiest event that I found that rewards treasury notes. Or is it? Hmm, suspense, because the path to enlightenment where you have to kill fireflies and then bring them to the lighthouse lamp for the mothman also rewards treasury notes. This is most definitely the easiest event that I found that also rewards treasury notes because you're literally just killing fireflies and every now and then a rat toad. And there's always a ton of people doing it because at the end of this quest a mothman appears and if you interact with it, don't shoot it, it will give you an XP boost. And the final event that I found so far that rewards treasury notes is the one and only uranium fever. This is a mid-level event, so if your gear is like really bad, you might want to skip it, but it always has a ton of people doing it because you get two to three legendary enemies to spawn every time. Though the legendary enemies aren't max level, so you get like level 35-ish legendaries from them, which isn't bad, but it's not great. And that's it, those are all the events that I've ran so far that rewarded treasury nodes. The ones that I ran and didn't reward me with treasury nodes were always Vigilant, Awol Armament, Breach and Clear, Death Blossoms, Distant Thunder, Dogwood Die of Dropped Connections, A Real Blast, Bottom Parade, then there is Grafton Day, Irrational Fear, A Leader of the Pack, Manhunt, Powering Up Any of the Power Plants, Project Beanstalk, The Wolf Horde Event in the Forest, and Any Workshop Defense. Now I'm gonna say this again, I've ran a lot of these multiple times just to make sure that they do or don't reward treasure notes, and some of them I just haven't been able to do so far. But that is what I've been able to find so far, so if you want sort of an updated version of this, you can head in the description and check out the spreadsheet which I will update as I do more and more events. And that's pretty much it for the video, so I thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it was helpful and I will see you some other time. Bye bye.